According to the Department of Defense, suicides in the United States military surged to a record of 349 last year, exceeding the number of those killed in combat. A recent study shows the suicide rate among veterans is also alarming. 22 vets are taking their own lives each day. The Department of Defense and the Office of Veterans Affairs are ramping up suicide prevention programs, but many service members are not getting the help they need. The Battle of Fallujah in the Sunni Triangle is considered one of the worst of the entire Iraq War. Daniel Ligon of Tulsa was deployed to the region twice during the height of the action. He came home forever changed. Did you think he was suicidal? Yes, I did, and we talked about that actually uh, three times, very specifically. Mary Ligon says her son suffered post-traumatic stress disorder and a host of other emotional and mental problems caused by the horrors of what he experienced in Iraq. She tried to help him by listening. Many, 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 many late to wee hours talks. And um, we talked, he, he did talk about a lot of personal issues and a lot of uh, his feelings about the war, about his buddies and some of his uh, struggles. She said her son just kept withdrawing and ended his life with a self-inflicted gunshot wound in June of 2007. Like many soldiers, Daniel refused to seek professional help. He had a, a sense of pride that he didn't want to be weak and admit that he had problems. I think he was concerned about his future, that if he admitted he had need, it would affect his future if he resumed active duty. Decorated war veteran Justin Blackburn of Oklahoma City died of a drug overdose on June 29, 2009. He did seek help. He tried to seek help through the military, and whenever he tried to seek help through the military, he found a program he wanted to go to in Colorado, and uh, he didn't get a response. We received a response right after he died. How long did he, was he waiting? Three years. Three years to get help? Mm -hmm. Scott Blackburn says his brother was an army medic and suffered from PTSD. It was triggered by an accident during artillery training at Fort Sill. 14 soldiers were burned. Justin was one of the first to their aid. Whenever he was trying to like find a vein, they were so severely burned that their skin was coming off and their arms and things weren't recognizable to where he could find a vein. Justin was given leave to recuperate, but had no time to heal because he was ordered to the Murrah Federal Building bombing. People would ask him, you know, how bad it was up there or whatever, and he just said that it was nothing compared to the artillery gun explosion. And what do you think he was doing at the Murrah Building? Well, he, from what, he, what I gathered, he was collecting body parts and putting them with, uh, m trying to match them up. Scott is now committed to helping struggling vets. He's part of a search and rescue team that checks on the well-being of homeless veterans. Scott says campsites of veterans are easy to spot because they're orderly. They're usually dealing with uh, separation, anxiety, PTSD, things like that, where they're, they're, just, uh, they're just done with society and they want to be left alone. So they want to be homeless? They want to be homeless, yeah. Scott is also the manager of the Coffee Bunker. It's a place where veterans in Tulsa can gather to share feelings with other vets. Did you get so low that you thought of ending it all? Oh yeah, many times, yeah. Steve is new to the Coffee Bunker and doesn't want his identity revealed. Well, coming here, it's just nice to be around other veterans and that, that they've been through stuff too. Mary Ligon established the coffee bunker. She did so after thinking back to what her son told her before he died. We don't have any place to go where we can get with each other. You know, there's no base here. There's, we just all come in from different places. We don't know we're here. We don't know each other. There's no place to connect. And so it's, it's isolating. Army veteran Trevor Barger has been coming to the coffee bunker for two years. When I got out, I thought, oh, you know, I'm different because I was in the Army. I later found out it was because I had PTSD. His PTSD relates back to finding his basic training buddy dead in their barracks. It was a suicide. I didn't have any aftercare. I didn't have any, I didn't get to talk to anybody. 
uh, no, but there was nobody to talk to. Um, so I suffered in silence. And that's why when I got out, I felt, I guess, anger towards the military. I felt anger because they didn't take care of it. These vets have since seen the Veterans Administration change the way it deals with veterans' mental health. In the past like year and year and a half or year, year and a few months, I've been getting a lot of help through the VA. And that's, that's I mean, my life has changed. <laughs> A few years ago, the VA established the Veterans Crisis Line. It's 1-800-273-8255, and that service has been expanded. They've started a text and chat, so someone can actually text to a crisis line responder or, or do an online chat with them as another way to reach out to veterans who may not feel comfortable calling. The crisis line is also for active duty military personnel more and more are asking for help. In the last few days, we've had nine referrals. So there, that has grown over the years to where it's up to over 800,000. I've actually called that, that number. After the initial communication, the VA dispatches a crisis team to the veteran or active duty soldier in need. Same day mental health care, guidance into outpatient treatment or hospitalization are all available. Mary Ligon believes multiple deployments are contributing to the suicide rate. Where our troops have gone as many as seven or eight deployments with as little as three or four months at home to recover. Through the years, soldiers haven't talked much about the horrors they endured, saw, or inflicted. Many who help vets believe talking is an important part of the healing process. That are sharing moral injury stories on their deathbed, uh, that they've carried this story with them. Uh, in their minds, they may have spared their family, but the, they carried that burden. And what I think our community needs to do is recognize that that is our story as well as their story. The pain may still be very raw no matter how long ago they served. Trevor Barger left the service in 1999 and is now going to college. I'm going to school for psychology. I hope to get my master's degree, that's the plan, uh, and then start helping other vets. I mean, that, that was the plan. You know, I got this goal in mind, and I'm, you know, no matter how hard it was, there's others out there that need me. No matter how far a vet may fall, Scott Blackburn says each is owed a safety net. They signed a contract regardless of whether they're a combat veteran or a non-combat veteran. At one time, they agreed to give their life for our country, and we should act like they did.